even though general relativity raises more questions than it answers. It remains the yardstick for astrophysics. Whilst conventional gravitational science remains at an impasse, there is one rogue physicist who claims he has made unprecedented progress. Like many scientists worldwide, California-based physicist Ricardo Carazzani has always taken exception to Einsteinian relativity. Since the 1940s, he has worked with classical alternatives and has developed the foundations for what is now a substantial physical theory based on science fact and rigorous logic. He calls this new physics autodynamics because the universe is de facto self-energizing and in perpetual motion. Within this context, Karazani has developed working quantum models, not just for subatomic interactions, but also for gravitation. This is a tall claim. If Karazani is correct, he will have made history. A working quantum model for gravitation is thought of by some to be no less than the holy grail of physics. Karazani has developed the Newton-Lissage line of corpuscular thinking. In the mid-1950s, he asked himself a simple question about the graviton. What if matter absorbs the graviton? Should not all matter then be getting heavier? Karazani set about looking for evidence, and lo, he found it. Team, final guidance release. We'll expect engine ignition at 8.9 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, ignition sequence started. All engines are started. We have ignition, 2, 1, 0. We have a liftoff. We have a liftoff, and it's lighting up the area. It's just like daylight here at Kennedy Space Center. It has now cleared the tower. In 1972, NASA launched a deep space probe, Pioneer 10. But several years into its journey, something unexpected occurred in the tracking of Pioneer 10. An analysis of its signal revealed that Pioneer 10 was slowing down. Conventional science is unable to explain this phenomenon, and so it has resorted to an ad hoc hypothesis called dark matter. This is one of several fudge factors arising from Einstein's gravitational opus. Critics of dark matter ask, why doesn't it affect other celestial phenomena? Remarkably, convention has no answer. In short, its use of general relativity has led to an intellectual shambles. Its gravitational theories are no more than conjecture built upon conjecture. But Karazani is telling us that the pushing particle requires little alteration to explain the pioneer anomaly. As gravitons flow through the Sun, some are absorbed. This means that the radiation pressure created by gravitons having passed through the Sun is weaker than the radiation pressure heading towards the Sun. So a satellite such as Pioneer 10 moving away from the Sun has to work against the net difference in graviton pressure. We can see from this model that while the graviton has velocity, gravitation, the force due to the difference in graviton pressure, has no velocity. Gravitation cannot be measured with time. It is atemporal. So if gravitation is instantaneous, as Newton's equation tells us, how does this mechanism account for Pioneer 10's sustained deceleration? If Karazani is correct, and the mass of the Sun is increasing due to graviton absorption, 
then so too does its capacity to absorb more gravitons. So as the mass of the Sun increases, the density of gravitons passing through the Sun is always diminishing, and with it, the attendant radiation pressure. But the radiation pressure opposing the satellite's flight path remains constant. It is the Sun's ongoing mass increase that caused Pioneer 10's ongoing deceleration, and the process is autodynamic. But if this really is a breakthrough in universal gravitation, it must do more than just explain away dark matter and the Pioneer anomaly. There is growing evidence that a torsion pendulum set in motion under a total eclipse of the Sun will swing anomalously. Ordinarily, a pendulum will rotate about its center. In actual fact, it is the Earth that is rotating, not the pendulum. This is most pronounced at the poles. Under a total eclipse, it is this rotation and the pendulum swing that are seen to increase. These phenomena are referred to as the Allais anomaly after one of their discoverers, Maurice Allais. As the moon passes under the sun, it absorbs gravitons. This leaves a relatively rarefied area under the moon. Thus, as the shadow of the totality of the eclipse passes over the pendulum, the force of gravitation changes affecting the pendulum's swing. The forces that occur during the eclipse are complex. Nevertheless, these simple models suggest that when the pendulum is fully covered by the eclipse, one might expect not one but two deviations in its period. One starting at the onset and one at the end of the eclipse as things return to normal. One might also expect the pendulum to start going askew before the onset of the eclipse. And both these predictions are being verified by the emerging evidence. There are other gravitational phenomena that Karazani's particle can also explain. Better on down. Okay, 76%, plenty fat. Contact. Stop. In 1969, astronauts visiting the Moon left silver reflectors on its surface. Astronomers have been able to use them to calculate the time it takes for a beam of light shot from Earth to reach a reflector and return. They have found that over the past 30 years, the time taken has increased. The Moon is receding from the Earth at nearly four centimeters each year. Karazani's hypothesis explains that because the Earth is smaller than the Sun, it absorbs fewer gravitons, and so the radiation pressure from the Earth to the Sun is greater than the radiation pressure from the Sun to the Earth. When the Moon is in alignment with the Sun and Earth, the net difference in radiation pressure pushes the Moon a little towards the Sun. But if this explanation is a veritable gravitational mechanism, it should be applicable to all Moons. And we should be able to see this in our solar system.